This day will go down in infamy, and Joe Biden will forever be remembered as not only the most corrupt president in the history of our country, but perhaps even more importantly, the president who, together with a band of his closest thugs, misfits, and Marxists, tried to destroy American democracy. But they will fail, and we will win bigger and better than ever before. Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917 wasn't meant for this. An act for a crime so heinous that only the death penalty would do, and threatening me with 400 years in prison wow. for possessing my own presidential papers, which just about every other president has done is one of the most outrageous and vicious legal theories ever put forward in an American court of law. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president <laughs> legally keeping his own documents. As president, the law that applies to this case is not the Espionage Act, but very simply the Presidential Records Act which is not even mentioned in this ridiculous 44-page indictment. Under the Presidential Records Act, which is civil, not criminal, I had every right to have these documents. The crucial legal precedent is laid out in the most important case ever on this subject, known as the Clinton Sox case. <laughs> you know what that means? After leaving the White House, Bill Clinton kept 79 audio tapes in his sock drawer. They included discussions of U.S. military involvement in Haiti, discussions of U.S. foreign policy, both defense and offense, against Cuba, recordings of President Clinton's conversations with all of the many foreign leaders at the time. Think of that. Sensitive facts about trade negotiations taken from presidential briefings, discussions with the Secretary of State about conflict in Bosnia, and much, much more. Very big stuff. Not only was Bill Clinton never even considered for criminal prosecution based on the tapes he took, but when he was sued for them, he won the case. Judge Amy Berman Jackson's decision states under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act. The decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in the president's sole discretion. You're surprised to hear that, aren't you? Any normal administration, even an opposing one, would consider that to be the end, but not the corrupt Biden administration. The Sox decision, as it's known, also states, quote, the National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, does not have the authority to designate material as presidential records. I don't have the authority. NARA does not have the tapes in question, and NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control of them. This is law. The president enjoys unconstrained authority to make decisions regarding the disposal of documents. That's unconstrained to make that decision. Neither the archivist nor Congress has the authority to veto the president's decision. The Presidential Records Act does not confer any mandatory or even discretionary authority on the archivist to classify records. Under the statute, this responsibility is left solely to the President of the United States. Think of that. That's the decision. Think of that.